welcome back to the channel. Uh, on to my next project. Just brought down the uh, Mad River Canoe uh, Eclipse model. It is a 16 foot 2 model. Um, 34 inch beam, 13 and 3 quarter inches at center depth, and 850 pound carrying capacity, uh, fully loaded with 6 inches of freeboard. So uh, more than enough than what I'm, my intended purpose is for this canoe. So this is my next restoration project. The gunnels are just completely deteriorated and, and uh, rotten. So they're going to get ripped out and replaced with some ash lumber that I just recently acquired. Uh, seats are in pretty good shape. Structurally, uh, the cane will be removed and then replaced with some webbing material that I have uh, left over from previous projects. Um, overall, um, you know, the hull's in great condition with the exception of three cold cracks that I, I found uh, through inspection. And I knew that when I was picking it up. It's just uh, I feel confident that uh, by reading forums and, and kind of researching the, the repair process for that, uh, I'm going to attempt it on my own. Uh, the cold cracks, I'll drill a hole at the bottom of where the crack currently terminates, and then I'll use a uh, saber saw and enlarge in that crack up to the screw hole and then uh, bevel it and file it and, and create a receiving type of uh, boundary there for some G-Flex epoxy. And, you know, apparently that works. And the only thing aesthetically which concerns me about that is not so much on the exterior because the exterior will get painted, but the interior. So, so that crack is penetrated all the way through from the exterior to the interior due to how the boat was stored. Uh, the boat was stored outside in winter and then different uh, uh, expansion rates and contraction rates of both wood in this plastic where the metal fasteners penetrate the hull create uh, this opposing force which causes these cold cracks and it's pretty typical if, if they're not cared for properly. Before I proceed with further disassembly of the gunnels, uh, all three seats are now out. Um, 
I'm going to strap the hull because I do not know exactly how it's going to respond, how it's going to flex after these uh, gunnels are removed, although they're in pretty bad shape. So if the hull is relaxed, I'm just going to tighten it up a little bit while the carrying handles are still attached to the Ford, uh, the bow and stern. And then uh, after the strap is installed, then um, certainly I'll release those as well and then finish removing um, the gunnels and then start cleaning up the hull. Just using the normal straps that I would use to carry my, my canoe on top of my car racks. That's all I have right now. It'll work. Good old Malone straps. Just don't want to get into a determining what the hull shape should be. I'm just going to try and maintain it as close as I possibly can to uh, what it is now without compressing the hull. So just taut, not see there are there already is quite a bit of flex in that hull, so that that this is uh recommended if you're in the same situation I I would assume. So the outwheels have been removed. The inwheels is uh, clamped here at each seating location. This uh, particular Eclipse model had three seats. The center seat most likely will not be reinstalled. Uh, I'm going to go to a carrying yoke there. Um, so the the reason why I left the inwheels installed to make reference lines at each seat location. So that when I uh, make my final determination to rebuild, that I have approximate idea of exactly where that seat should go. Some manipulations may occur. I, I may make some adjustments because this will be a solo boat uh, mostly. It will have at a minimum a stern and bow seat, but uh, the, the center seat that came with it, although conceptually I, I even thought maybe that would be pretty decent for you know a, a center position solo paddling state uh, seat but I I'm more accustomed to paddling uh, a symmetrical boat from the the bow seat vice the stern and and in order to carry this canoe which I intend to take it on trips and, and portage with it I, I need a carrying yoke so um, this is what it looks like right now. Outwe again, outwheels removed, in wheels still installed, carrying handles still there. Uh, I take the clamps off, it all comes off. But here's a general idea of the gunnels that were removed. Pretty well uh, rotted through and, and not cared for. So this is all about storage of the canoe. We'll dress this all up and make it very serviceable again. Looking forward to it.
I will also mark the carrying handle location in the gunnel, in the in wheel. Both bow and stern. So I have one stress crack on the bow, and this is the stern. And it's easy to see here the split in the core. If you can see that. This is a smaller one. And then also immediately on the other side, this would be the starboard side. But look at this. Don't store your boats upside down in the off season, outside in the elements. So all the internals are removed, the seats, the carrying handles, the uh, three seats, the gunnels, the decks, and I took a, uh, you know, a razor blade and, and carried it along the uh, outwell and inwell sides to remove all of the uh, accumulated gunk over the years, uh, pretty thick. So now what I'm doing is uh, just inspecting the bottom side of the hull, and what you'll see is uh, your normal wear and tear however it looks like some spray painting maybe occurred here there's uh, some discoloration or maybe fading unequal fading but th there are no like uh, extreme gouges that concern me and I knew this coming into it, and that's why I felt confident buying it. Some scuffing here, uh, considering doing a skid plate install here, Kevlar. So I'm going to sand the hull uh, very lightly, smooth it out, maybe apply some heat at first and do a thin scrape with a thin edge. And then... Uh, try and smooth that out. I will be using a primer and a paint 
and that may also blend in some of these normal scratches that occur on a on a canoe that's this age what I'm going to do now is just follow along with uh, a, a very thin blade razor blade style and take off any rough edges uh, without removing any material just the high surfaces uh, this will be getting primed and painted with a rust-oleum product I decided to go with blue uh, just because you know when when you scratch the canoe um, you know I, I wouldn't want a red canoe and having a blue streak you know type thing so yeah I'm gonna start working on the bottom of the hull um, paints ordered so I just gotta wait for that to get delivered So what I'm finding here is, uh, as I'm scraping the surface here, just gently, is that uh, somebody in the past um, tried to conceal some of those scrapes or whatever with a, uh, a color that didn't match. So um, I'm not too concerned about that. It's coming off pretty easy. So uh, just gonna go around the whole hull, continue as I am, and then uh, prepare the surface for uh, primer. So I'm going to have to address this crack. This is a cold crack. It occurs, I, as I explained earlier, uh, unequal thermal expansion of the wooden gunnels in this vinyl uh, core a material, uh, Royal X. This is Royal X light. So what I need to do here is find the end of this crack, drill a hole to stop the progression of this crack. Then I'm gonna take a saber saw and then uh, widen widen the crack bevel the edges inside and out and then uh, apply g-flex now this is what i'm talking about you can see the crack on the inside too and what it's going to do is uh leave a discoloration on the inside of the of the inside of this canoe which is in pretty decent shape I mean there's some paint here and there was paint on the outside of the hull but what it'll do is it'll leave a, a, a yellow tint along the edge mostly covered by the deck so I may not need to do any uh, coloring on the inside or painting on the inside and then if you look here can see there's there's a cold crack here and there's also one on this side here uh, same process saber saw drill a pilot hole to stop the progression of the crack fill it with g-flex and let it cure so I've located the bottom of the crack the cold crack is right here And I'm just going to drill an eighth inch pilot hole to stop that from uh, progressing any further. Same thing. On the stern.
Okay, so all the prep is done. <clears throat> Seats are removed, gunnels are removed, decks are removed. Everything's removed. I scraped the hull with a razor blade uh, to just slightly to take off the extremely rough edges, uh, not to uh, remove any of the vinyl material. Um, I have addressed the cold cracks by using a uh, saber saw to uh, widen that gap. Uh, to make a nice clean cut and uh, then what I need to do is file the edges bevel it uh, for the G flex to be able to be injected in there um, that process I'm not too sure about but I'm gonna get to it um, it's gonna require some tape on the back side to catch the uh, the epoxy resin and then um, on the other side too and I, I just need to get something that's gonna be able to inject that G flex maybe from the top side but i'm going to work it in uh, anyway the cold cracks need to be addressed next because i have my paint on order i want this epoxy to cure then i want to get to ripping down the gunnels and then i want to be able to prepare the hull um, i just took all the decal measurements i'm going to see if they can be made by hand um, on a cricket machine that uh, I know somebody that has so all of the lettering uh, dimensions have been recorded and uh, so uh, hopefully I can have those made but that's the uh, first part of this video and then uh, once I get all my materials I'll, I'll get back into the project and then uh, we'll go from there thanks for watching